Hello YouTube and welcome to the next Roots Learning video. On today's video we're continuing the theme of doing something a little bit different. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be driving a Freightliner Class 66 from Ravenstruther to Moss End on the West Coast Mainline North add-on, which is a distance of around 17 and a half miles. The scenario that I'm using for this comes with Armstrong Powerhouse Scenario Pack 13 and is called 6G10-1739 Ravenstruther to Long Annet. At the start of this scenario, the first thing I'm going to need to do is uncouple the locomotive from the wagons behind and then we're going to need to drive forward and then change the point manually and drive all the way around the train to the other end and then hook up to the wagons at the other end of the train before then backing up and reversing around the loop to a head shunt, at which point we will then stop and then we can proceed forward onto the west coast mainline and out towards Moss End. The Class 66 was constructed by General Motors Electromotive Division between 1998 and 2014, with a total of 446 of these locomotives produced, making them the most commonly seen freight locomotive within the UK. The maximum speed of the unit is 75 miles per hour, with a power output of 3,300 horsepower. Once in the cab of the Class 66, there's a few things that we need to do to set up the locomotive, but I would just like to point out that many of the features here have been added by the Armstrong Powerhouse Class 66 sound pack and don't come with the locomotive as default. I will place a link to the Armstrong Powerhouse sound pack in the description of this video. So the first thing that we need to do is put the reversing handle into position. So if we look here you can see the yellow handle there is the reversing handle and if I now press shift and W that, remo that moves the reversing handle and puts it in. And then the AWS self test sequence goes off which I've now reset. And at this point I now need to put it into reverse as we're going to need to back up the loco for a moment before driving forward around our train. For all of the shunt moves here, I'm going to remain in this cab and not go to the other cab, mainly because when in this cab, we need to use the heads out view. And if we move to the other cab to use the heads out view, it still places you back in this cab once again, which is incorrect and to me just slightly annoying. Just above the reversing handle, we have the power handle, which has eight notches of power from one to eight. And now if we go around the cab and follow it around, in front of us now we have the ammeter which has the needle there currently pointing at zero with the green um, bit around the gauge. So with the ammeter as I increase power that will increase the amount of electricity that is being generated by the engine uh, or should I say to the traction motors. And so as we uh, increase the power you'll see the needle climb. And what we need to do is we need to ensure that the needle does not go into the red zone and we need to try and keep it in the green zone at all times when driving the locomotive. Just to the left of that we have the speedometer as always measured in miles per hour and as you can see there is a red line by 75 miles per hour indicating the maximum permissible speed for this locomotive. And now here we've got the brake pipe gauge. Now the brakes on this locomotive are actually spring loaded so if I now move the uh, brakes to the release position for a moment you'll see that the outside needle there has climbed. If I now let go the needle on the inside then moves to match the position of the outside needle. The gauge just to the left of that is the airflow measured in litres a second. So as the brakes are applying or releasing, that litres a second gauge is showing you how quickly the air is moving to apply or release the brakes. And now over here we have the uh, main uh, brake cylinder pressure gauge which I will be using on the journey to indicate how hard the brakes are applied. As you can see they're currently pointing at three bars. If I now reduce the braking a bit they drop towards two and ultimately they'll point to zero to indicate that the brakes are released. We shouldn't actually need to use hard braking on this locomotive. I'm not sure if the physics are quite accurate when driving along but certainly I found the brakes to be very very effective in this locomotive when driving. Just to the left of the driver's position we have a number of controls here which work on this locomotive. So uh, at the very top there we have the emergency brake button. And then just below that to the left you can see a button which says train length. Now that's something I'm going to use on this journey today. And what it does is when you pass a speed limit board say with an increase in the speed limit. 
If you then press the train length button, it will uh, sound the beep. And then it will sound the second beep once the rear of the train has passed that point. So you can be sure that the rear of the train is clear of the previous speed limit. Just below the train length button is the locomotive brake, which is again partly spring loaded. So if I now want to apply the brakes, I move it up and hold the button in. And now you can see the brake needles climbing there. And now I let go to stop the needles from climbing any further. And then you move it back to the released position to release the locomotive brake once again. Down here is the train brake, again spring loaded but working slightly differently. The default position for the train brake is in the center. And so if you want to release the brakes, you press the release button and you have to hold it down. If you then let go, the uh, brake handle will immediately spring back to the center position. And now the same with applying the brakes. You press apply and hold the button down until you've reached the desired brake force and then let go. And once again, the handle defaults back to the center position, which it is spring loaded to do so. Now just to the left of that we have the horn which is a two-tone horn sounding with the space and the B key. And then just down here we have the AWS acknowledge button. Above the front window of the locomotive we have a computerized display system which you can actually turn on and operate. So if I now press control and enter, numpad enter, you can now see that the display has come on and you can actually move around the display using the control button and the arrow keys on the numpad which are 2, 4, 6 and 8. So if I press control 2 at this point you can see that it's moved down and so what I'm going to want to do is I want to get to the main uh, system which drivers would normally use when driving which I believe is the power data system which you can see here. So now you can see up there the throttle position, the engines, revs per minute and so on. And so that's the screen I'm going to leave it on for this journey. Another feature which has been added with the Armstrong Powerhouse sound pack is the driver safety device which you can turn on by pressing shift and D and at that point you'll see there's a red light currently in the right of the screen there that says DSD isolate indicating that the driver safety device is turned off so if I press shift and D sorry control and D I'll correct that not shift and D you'll now see that we've got a pop-up saying that the driver vigilance device is operating and the light has gone out indicating that it is now working so now we're going to go back outside to uncouple the locomotive from the wagons in front of us and then we can start our shunting around the train to prepare for departure from Ravenstruther so here we are on the outside of the locomotive and I'm just going to double click now on the coupling between the locomotive and the wagons behind. So at this point we have now uncoupled from the wagons and now need to get back inside and start reversing beyond the point just ahead of us. And then at that point I can then uh, change the points, drive around the train and reverse back onto it once again. So I'm now releasing the brakes, just reset the uh, driver safety device there and now I'm just going to apply just a little bit of power to get us moving. And at this point I'm now going to look outside the locomotive and just see where we are. I'm certainly not going to go above the speed limit here, just to point out the speed limit is 15 miles per hour and we're certainly not going anywhere near that on this section of the journey. And now that we're crossing the points here I'm applying the brakes to bring us to a stop. Okay, so now that we've stopped here, I can now see the points ahead. I'm just going to bring up the map quickly so that I can then change the point so you can see the map here. And you can see uh, what we've got to do is we have to go down here around the train, which you can see there, where it says couple to the back of. And then we need to go all the way up and around the head shunt, backing the train up to the other end. And then we can drive out onto the West Coast main line at the top there. And just to zoom out, you can see here, in fact, that we're actually starting quite near to Carstairs Station. So we're starting just to the west of Carstairs. So at this point, I'm now just going to zoom back in down here. I'm going to click on the point just in front of the locomotive. And just check along here that the point at the other end is set, which indeed it is. So I can now turn off the map, get back in the cab, put the train into forward, and then start moving. I just realised that I haven't actually put the headlights on yet, so I've just done that now. Um, I uh, guess that we uh, would certainly need the headlights even in this yard section. So again, just a reminder, the speed limit here is 15 miles per hour, so I'm not going to exceed that at any point. 
and it's giving us a low amount of power we're currently in notch 2 of power to bring our speed up towards 15. I'm going to idle the power and allow the train to coast in a moment just as we get to around 12 or 13 miles per hour. One of the things with this locomotive is that when you do cut off the power there is a delay in actually putting the power handle in idle uh, before the uh, ammeter actually falls and at that point you can continue to accelerate for a few seconds even while the locomotive is in the idle setting. So as we drive along here I'm going to use the locomotive brake to bring us to a stop rather than the train brake once we reach the head shunt at the other end of this loop. So as you can see we are now approaching the head shunts and in a moment I'm going to apply the locomotive brake. In fact I'm going to start doing that now. I'll take us up to two bars on the brake pressure gauge there and that should bring our speed down nicely. Just release the brakes for a moment just to ensure that I wasn't stopping too early and now reapply. And so we've come to a nice gentle stop there. At this point I now need to do a heads out once again and look the other way. And I need to quickly turn on the map just to change the point in front of the locomotive, which I've now done. And so at this point I can now reverse up into the train behind us. So I'm just going to give us notch 2 of power to get us moving. And now one of the problems of course here is that I can't actually clearly see how far we are away from the train. So I certainly don't want to give us too much speed along here. And now we've accelerated, we're doing around 5 miles per hour there. 5 miles per hour should be adequate uh, for us to back up towards the train. Though I am going to brake just as we get a bit closer to it to try and ensure that we don't end up coupling too hard. As you can see we're now coming in quite slowly and gently. Though I should probably still couple up slightly slower than this. Uh, it seems that we actually uh, hit the train already so I now need to press Control, Shift and C which has now coupled us up to the wagons behind us. And at this point I now need to continue reversing and I need to reverse all the way around the head shunt from this view. So the brakes are now fully released. At this point we're really going to see just how much the weight of this train affects the performance of this loco. So I'm now back into notch 2 of power again and you can see here just how slow the acceleration is. If I now get into the cab I'm going to increase power to as high as the ammeter will allow me to do so. Which I believe at this speed is around notch 5 power. And so the ammeter has stopped there in the green zone just before the red zone. And as you can see the acceleration rate here is extremely slow. And now going back outside once again to keep an eye on what's happening. One of the things that I have to do is ensure that I judge this right. Because if we go too far on this shunt then the rear of the train will end up hitting the buffers at the other end of the head shunt. But if we don't go far enough it won't register that I've stopped in the right place and consequently we won't be able to continue our journey out onto the west coast mainline. Now getting back in the cab for a moment just to check our speed and I see we are now doing 10 miles per hour which is absolutely fine at the moment so I'm going to go back outside once again. driver safety device just went off thankfully I had the visual alarm there come on which notified me of it otherwise I wouldn't be able to hear it of course in real life you would if you had the window open I'm very sure so at this point we are now doing just below 15 miles per hour just checking our speed there I've now idled the power and I'm allowing the train to coast we're not going to need any more power along here 
And at this point, we now whack our head on the posts of the uh, uh, coal station there. Now you can see just how big a curve this is and you can see the back of the train is uh, quite a long way around the curve there. And um, if you're looking, we can't quite see the back at the moment. If I zoom in slightly, you can see the back of the train is just over there. So what we need to do now is we're going to be passing a signal along here in a moment. The signal is the landmark that I'm looking out for to let us know we're getting close to the point where we need to stop. There are then some uh, red light posts. In fact, you can see the red light posts coming up here. So I'm going to count them beyond the signal. And once we've got to, I believe it is the third uh, post after the signal, at that point we can then stop, and we should be stopped in around the right place. So the signal is just coming up now. As we now pass the rear of the signal, I can now start counting the light posts. I'm just applying a little bit of braking there to start bringing our speed down. In fact, I, I applied slightly too much. One of the problems with this loco I discovered is, even with the absolute minimal brake application, the brakes seem to come on really hard, and they slow you down far quicker than you would expect them to, especially for such a large and heavy freight train. You can now see the buffers just up there in the distance now, so you can see how close the rear of the train is getting to them. We've now passed two of the light posts, and just as we get towards this third one, I'm going to apply the brakes and bring us to a stop. So I've now put the train into forward, ready for departure here from Ravenstruther. As you can see, the signal ahead is displaying a red aspect, so we're just awaiting clearance onto the West Coast main line here. So once that Pendolino has passed and cleared the signal section ahead, we will then be cleared onto the West Coast main line. The starting speed limit here is 15 miles per hour, and we've got around 16 and a half miles to go to Moss End. As you can see, the signal has now cleared to a single yellow, so I'm now going to go into the highest power setting that I can so that we can accelerate as quickly as possible, which, as you've already seen, certainly isn't very quick at all. I think I can probably go one notch higher in power. I'm just keeping an eye on the ammeter here, and if the ammeter does go into the red, then I will reduce the power once again. As you can see, we've now reached around 7 miles per hour, so we are accelerating just very, very slowly indeed. And what we're going to do in a minute, once I've crossed the point ahead and uh, crossed onto the West Coast Main Line, I'm then going to press the train length button. So the beep will go off when I do so, though it may be difficult for you to hear on the video. And then once it beeps the second time, I will then know that I can accelerate above 15 miles per hour. So I've now pressed the train length button, and I'll just wait until that beeps again, and then go back up towards full power to accelerate. At the moment I'm reducing the power just to ensure that we don't break the 15 mile per hour speed limit. So as you can see, the ammeter's falling nicely now, and I put the power right down to notch 2 right now, though I still think we may be accelerating slightly. So I've just cut the power down another notch to ensure that we don't break the speed limit. So we've just had two beeps there from the train length uh, indicator, so at this point I can now increase the power, so I'm putting the power handle up, and I'm just watching to see what happens with the ammeter once again, so that we accelerate on the highest setting we possibly can. Certainly once we get towards 20 miles per hour we can then go into full power. You 
can see the ammeter is starting to fall there now, so I've just put the power up to full. And so now in full power, we're within the green zone on the ammeter, and we can remain in full power to accelerate up towards uh, 60 miles per hour, which is our maximum speed for this journey, even though the speed limit on the main line is 100 miles per hour. And certainly I would say that this train has the braking performance to be able to go faster than that, um, as you'll see when I have to use the brakes in a little while. Uh, one of the problems with the physics with the brakes on this particular train is that when you apply the brakes, it's like the wagons slam into the locomotive really hard and you see a massive jolt and then quite rapid deceleration which I'm just not sure is realistic. And that happens even on the minimal brake setting. We're now approaching Lanark Junction and so once we cross the junction that is the line from Lanark towards Glasgow. And in fact, I've driven a route learning video in the opposite direction from Glasgow Central to Lanark along here. And so right now we're going to be following the path of that video, but in the opposite direction, uh, probably for the next 10 to 15 minutes before we turn off the route that I took on that video to head towards, I think it's the last five or so miles to Moss End. We are currently going uphill which is affecting our acceleration but in a little while we're going to start going downhill on a 1 in 130 downhill gradient and so we're going to have to use the brakes to control our speed which really isn't easy on this. Even using the locomotive brake in full the train is uh, has the tendency to accelerate. Well if I use the train brake the uh, train slows down too quick. So there's really no easy way to maintain a speed limit on a downhill gradient in this loco. So this is the first uh, freight journey I've done in the UK since my question and answer video, which I believe was back in May, if I remember correctly. Um, so I just wanted to say the reason why I don't do too many freight journeys is just because there's actually not a lot to do or say. Uh, most of the time you're driving along at, the, at your train speed limit, which is vastly below the line speed limit. And as a result, no speed changes really affect you. And with having no stops either, unless you've got signals against you, there's really not much to do. So uh, for now, we're going to just continue driving along and accelerating up to 60 and then dealing with the uh, speed as we go on the downhill gradient. But other than that, there's only really one or two speed changes between here and the approach to Moss End Yard. A number of people recently have been asking me about how to install various different types of files to uh, Train Simulator and the most common file type is called an RWP file. So what I'm thinking of doing is this week at some point just uh, taking a few minutes to record a video demonstrating how to install RWP files for those who don't know just because I think it would be very useful and it's probably the best way to answer uh, some of the questions that I've been getting about it. So the loud noise that you're hearing that came on uh, about a minute or so ago is actually the uh, cooling fan for the locomotive. 
Uh, what Armstrong Powerhouse did in the sound pack is they added simulation of the cooling fan. So once the engine temperature gets above a certain level, the fan comes on and you hear that noise. Up until the engine cools down below a certain temperature, which I think is something like a 117 Fahrenheit, something like that. At which point the fan will then shut off and you won't be hearing that noise anymore. Um, which I think is quite a nifty little uh, addition that uh, certainly adds to the realism of the Class 66. currently looking at the next route to try and make a route guide video on because of the popularity of the last two I'd like to try and make a few more of these uh, a bit more often but one of the problems with making any video of that type is just how long it takes to put together so I've got a target to try and get another route guide up before I start university in a couple of weeks uh, we'll see how we go with that, but I'm planning on starting to write the script within the next couple of days. And this time I'd like it to be on a busy British main line rather than on a smaller line. Uh, we started with the Isle of Wight as the first route guide and then the second route guide was the West Somerset Railway. Uh, both of which are fairly slow minor routes and so I'd like to go co and cover a major main line. I haven't decided which one yet but I'm going to decide over the next couple of days. If you've got any you'd particularly like to see, please do let me know. Um, I will take it into consideration when deciding which route to look at to make a video on. We are now getting towards 60 miles per hour and I know that uh, the downhill section is around here. In fact, I believe we may already be on the downhill section. So I'm just idling the power at this point and I'm going to keep an eye on what happens to our speed. In fact, it looks like we are possibly losing a little bit of speed, but we'll see what happens. If we get below 55, I will reapply power and if we accelerate up towards 60, then I'll start using the brakes to control our speed. We're certainly not dropping below 55 miles per hour. I think we were possibly dropping towards it when I cut the power off, but it looks like we're accelerating slightly now. So I'm assuming that the downhill gradient has started. I couldn't actually clearly see where the gradient changed. Based on the behavior of the speed of the train, I'm pretty sure we're going downhill now. So I'm now just going to use a minimal brake application and that's bringing our speed off quite quickly. In fact, it didn't jolt the train as much as it usually does, which was uh, slightly surprising there. We're now passing through Carluke Station. And so we've now got a diverging route aspect coming up. Uh, initially a flashing double yellow signal, followed by the flashing single yellow, then a solid single yellow, as we're going to turn off the West Coast Main Line at Law Junction. For now, I'm allowing the train to coast back up towards 60 miles per hour. Again, I will use the brakes as we reach 60. In fact, we don't really need to start thinking about braking until we approach the single yellow after the flashing single yellow signal. At that point, 
the speed limit is dropping to 50 miles per hour as we cross Law Junction. But of course being a solid single yellow aspect that also means I have to drive with caution assuming that the next signal is a red, even though in reality I'm almost certain that it isn't. I'm going to have to drive assuming that it is until I can see otherwise. The gradient is levelling out here, you can probably see the gradient change there. I'm just going to allow the train to continue to coast along here as we head towards the 50 mile per hour speed limit coming up. The 60 mile per hour Morpeth board warning that we had there was for the west coast mainline and not the route that we're taking. As I've already mentioned the speed limit for us is dropping to 50 just after the signal coming up so I'm just making a light brake application now and we're already down to below 50 miles per hour. I'm going to continue to brake in a moment to slow down until I can see the next signal so that I know that I'm going at a slow enough speed to stop if it is displaying a red aspect. So we're now crossing Law Junction, the West Coast Main Line goes off to our left towards Glasgow Central and just here the speed limit on this route is going up to 75 miles per hour which is once again 60 miles per hour for us. I've now slowed to around 30 and I'm trying to keep an eye out ahead for the signal so that I can power up as soon as I can see that it is displaying a green aspect. Which it is and I can now see the signal. So now going straight up to full power to accelerate back up towards 60 miles per hour. I do apologise for the lag that I'm getting on this video, uh, it is slightly annoying. This is a route that does have a tendency to lag, though I do notice it's quite random where it's running smooth and then all of a sudden a patch of lag and then back to smooth. I do really wish that this game was more optimised, but we are now just two weeks away from me being able to order a new PC, so hopefully Within the next two to three weeks, uh, lag will become much less of a problem in this game. And I'll also be able to have the graphics settings set on full, which is what I'm hoping to be able to do. But we'll see how, the, how well the computer performs. There's a lot of videos I'd like to make which I'm actually holding off on now until I've got the new PC so that I can really show off the routes in their best light. Uh, one of those is the return journey on the West Coast Main Line from Glasgow Central uh, down towards... Carlisle and then Carlisle down towards uh, Preston. I also don't plan on covering any more on West Coast Mainline Trent Valley until I've got an EPC because when I did make the video for that on this channel uh, I did find that the computer was really struggling with the performance and I just wasn't too happy with the frame rate so I'd really like to make a, a new video on that route in the opposite direction or possibly on the fast line in a Pendolino or an older loco like the class 86 or 87. Uh, with the new PC where it should hopefully be running a lot better and look a lot better as well. I'm also now holding off on any new South London network videos until I've got the new PC due to having some major performance issues with several scenarios that I've tried to uh, run. I was actually last week trying to create a scenario for that route using the new class 4558. I created two different scenarios and unfortunately the AI was just so busy in both of them on different journeys uh, that it was just too laggy for me to record. I really didn't want to record a complete slideshow so I'm holding off on that until I've got the new PC as well uh, which another video that I'm hoping to make also after that will be uh, a London to Brighton slow line video which I may have mentioned in a previous video actually that's a video I'd like to make soon and I'd like to do it at a busy time of day if possible I think that will make an interesting video and London to Brighton is one of my favourite routes if not probably in fact my favourite route.
We're now approaching 60 miles per hour and I'm cutting off the power as we're going to start going downhill along here. In fact, we may already be on the downhill section, which is down at 1 in 100. We're now passing through Wishaw Station. And so the trains from Lanark towards Glasgow will actually turn off at this junction to the left. So the junction is just coming up now. And so that's the junction that we came up when we came from Glasgow Central towards Lanark in, in my previous video on this route. And at this point, this is a section of track that we actually haven't covered in any route learning videos so far. There is a 40 mile per hour speed restriction coming up along here. I believe it's not just after this signal, but just after the next signal where the 40 mile per hour speed limit comes into force. So now I'm looking out for the next signal. I'm going to break just before that for the upcoming 40 speed limit. We do have a Morpeth board warning for the upcoming 40 limits, so I'm going to apply the brakes at this point as we've reached 60 miles per hour. Now our speed should fall off fairly quickly, though we are going downhill which may affect our deceleration rate. You can just see the 40 mile per hour speed boards coming up, it looks like we will be down to 40 in time. So I'm just releasing the brakes now so that we're doing just below 40 as we go downhill, though the gradient is levelling out here. And it's just really for this bridge that we have the 40 mile per hour speed limit because as soon as we've crossed the bridge here, the speed limit is then going up to 60 miles per hour. I'm now going to press the train length button once again. We just had the two beeps from the train length there. Uh, so should I say the train length monitor there? And so now I'm going up to full power. We're now starting to go downhill on a 1 in 100 downward gradient. So as we get towards 45 miles per hour at that point I'm then going to idle the power and allow the train to coast to gain speed up towards 60. The speed limit has now gone up to 65 miles per hour though that won't affect us. I've now idled the power at 45 miles per hour. The speed limit will soon be going down to 40 miles per hour. 
and at this station coming up which is Holly Town or Holy Town I'm not sure how it's uh, pronounced it's one of the two we've now got half a mile to go to the upcoming 40 speed limit I see we've just encountered a train simulator bug there with a blank signal unfortunately that was a blank diverging aspect signal uh, I'm already aware from when I practiced on this journey that that was a flashing uh, I believe it was a flashing double possibly a flashing single I'm not entirely sure I do know there is a junction coming up shortly which we will be crossing to turn towards Moss End and I just brake for the 40 mile per hour speed limit and I've released the brakes just below 40 miles per hour. It seems that that would have been a flashing single yellow signal which we passed which was blank. Because we've now got the solid single yellow signal which means I need to drive with caution once again assuming that the next signal is red until I can see otherwise. The speed limit here is 40 miles per hour crossing these points, though it is soon dropping to 30 miles per hour. And here's where we turn towards Moss End Yard. And we're probably about a mile away at this present moment. And now applying the brakes a bit more just to be sure that I'm going slow enough should the next signal be displaying a red aspect. And we can now see that the next signal is displaying a single yellow aspect which means I can release the brakes and the speed limit at this point is 30 miles per hour so I'm just going to increase the power just to accelerate a little but I'm not going to go all the way up to 30 miles per hour I'm probably going to idle at around 20 to 25 speed limit is 30 also as we cross into Moss End Yard but shortly after we enter the yard the speed limit is then going down to 5 miles per hour And the speed limit will then remain at 5 miles per hour until we reach the signal at the end of the siding, which we're routed to stop on. So I'm now applying the brakes to bring our speed down. 5 mile per hour speed limit comes into force just after the next point ahead. And so we're now down to 5 miles per hour in time. Unfortunately 5 miles per hour is a very slow speed and it's not the most fun speed to be driving at so I'm glad that it's only this section at the end of the journey where that speed limit is in force. I'm really not sure why it needs to be 5 miles per hour. It could really be 10 or 15, no issues at all. Um, but it seems that they've decided that 5 miles per hour should be the maximum speed that we're allowed to travel through this yard at. I'm just going to give us one notch of power at the moment because I can see that we are losing speed and I really don't fancy travelling at 3 or 4 miles per hour which at this slow speed can make it take up to double the time uh, especially if you got to 2.5 miles per hour then, then it would take up to double the time that 5 miles per hour would so it makes a huge difference even 1 mile per hour at this speed even doing 4 miles per hour it would take 20% longer it seems that we're still not gaining any speed, so I'm going to give us a second notch of power now to bring us back up to 5.
And so we need to stop by the red signal at the end of this uh, section of the yard, this siding that we're currently on, which you can see coming up just ahead, unfortunately, very slowly. I'm not actually going to get much chance to uh, end this video once we stop because the scenario will end very quickly. So at this point I just really wanted to say thank you again for watching this video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, also thank you for all of you who have subscribed so far. We're getting very close to 4,000 subscribers now. I'm thinking of doing something special when we get to, or when the channel gets to 5,000 subscribers which will hopefully be in a I, I estimate three months time so once we reach that probably around Christmas then I'll probably do something special especially if the steam Christmas sale is on we might have a, a giveaway or something as a one-off just to say thank you to everyone who has taken the time to subscribe to me please don't forget that you can find me on Facebook for the latest updates the link of which is in the description of this video and we're nearly at 500 likes on Facebook now I've reached 490 so thank you to everyone who has uh, clicked like on Facebook and is following me on there and if you value the work that I do and would like to sponsor me towards the cost of new equipment or future projects, then please don't hesitate to visit my Patreon page for further information. Again, the link for that is in the description of this video. And I'd also just like to take this moment to thank everyone who has supported me on Patreon so far. I really do appreciate it and really value your contribution and the fact that you've taken the time to watch these videos and like them enough to support me in that way. And certainly, Patreon income has helped towards funding my new computer, a game which I'm really, really grateful for. So we're approaching the signal now. I'm going to stop in a moment a little bit before the signal so that we've got good visibility for any driver getting in to take the train on to Long Anna. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm not 100% certain. I'm not even sure where it is actually. I think I'm going to look it up now and find out where Long Anna actually is. Certainly that's where this train is heading in the timetable. So here we are, arrival at Moss End in Glasgow. Thanks for watching.